Now this is a very short video on the making a diagnosis of a tubular adenoma in the colon. And I'm making this primarily with my first year residents in mind. So when I look at tubular adenomas, I often look at them on low power. And what I'm looking for is very blue looking epithelium. And I'm looking for blue looking epithelium on the top. I'm also looking for these contrasts, when I'm gonna, which is something I'm gonna talk about over and over again. I'm looking for a crypt that looks atypical was where right adjacent to which there is a crypt that looks not atypical at all, looks like a normal colonic trip. And those are the two features that on low power I use to make a diagnosis of a tubular adenoma. And then I go on high power. So what am I looking for on high power to make a diagnosis of a tubular adenoma? I'm looking for cells that are tall, they're dark, that means they're hypochromatic, and they are stratified or pseudostratified. So multiple layers of cells. Here's one, here's two, here's three. So relatively simple, right? So here, here, and here, the cells look tall, dark, and hypochromatic. But you have to ask yourself, tall, dark, and hypochromatic compared to who? And the answer to that question is tall, dark, and hypochromatic compared to adjacent normal colonic crypts. And I promise you, you will see normal colonic crypts. So let's look at this focus right here. Here's a relatively normal looking crypt. There are the goblet cells. True, there are goblet cells within the adenoma. And in fact, adenomas can show panet cells and goblet cells and all sorts of lineages that you normally see in the colon. But look at that cell. That cell is at the base and there's abundant apical cytoplasm. That cell is way larger than that cell. It's way darker than that cell. And instead of having a single layer of cells, they are, at least on this side of things, they are multiple layers of cells. So tall, that's pencil shaped versus small cuboidal, dark hypochromatic relative to these cells, and stratified relative to these cells. And that constitutes an adenoma. Now there are other features that do help, and that is increased apoptotic activity, and you will see apo increased apoptotic activities in an adenoma. I almost think of an adenoma as it grows fast. In fact, if you do a key 67, you'll see a lot of key 67, but it dies just as quickly, and hence many of them, I assume, are eliminated over time. Very few adenomas actually progress to cancer. And so here's the apoptotic activity. In subtle situations where the atypia is very subtle, I will use apoptotic activity to support my diagnosis, to buttress my diagnosis of an adenoma. And there's one additional feature that I use to make a diagnosis of an adenoma. And this is something that I like to see anytime I make a diagnosis of dysplasia or an adenoma in the colon. And that is extension into the surface. So here it is, it's extending to the surface epithelium right here. Now, I do that for a very specific reason, and that is reactive processes anywhere in the tubular gut can get, rev up the epithelium and the epithelium can look like an adenoma, but, but that revved up appearance is typically at the base. In a reactive process, you will not see atypia extending all the way to the surface. So yes, tall, dark, and stratified, but it should also be on the surface. Another feature, particularly when you're dealing with very subtle adenomas that is helpful, is this abrupt transformation. So here's the adenoma, and I can draw a line between where the adenoma stops and the normal epithelium begins, and that line is right here. And so that abrupt transition is a very good feature of both dysplasia in general, as well as an adenoma anywhere in the GI tract. I hope you find this useful.